One of the things at Green Cover that we've always preached and always been huge believers in, Dale, is the power of diversity. And as we look at things planted in monoculture strips and then we compare it to how it looks in a beautiful diverse mix like this, I'm always amazed, probably shouldn't be surprised anymore, but I'm always amazed at how nice things look in the mix. So this is our uh, warm season soil builder mix. It's got probably 12, 15 different plants in it. And it's just incredible how these things all grow together in such harmony and how, for the most part, everything in here looks better than it does when we looked at it in the monoculture strips. What's your observations here, Dale? Uh, number one thing I see is I don't see is what I don't see. Yeah. And that's weeds. No weeds. There's no weeds in here. And there's been no weeding done in here. Some of our plots will do some weeding just so we can uh, identify things, but I never let them weed out the mixes because that's what we want to show how good a weed control you get. Yeah, when, when you get all these different plants, they basically, I, I like to say that weeds are a sign from God that we're not using all the sunlight and moisture that we've received. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a mix and, and, and you get weeds when you have unused sunlight and moisture uh, because you got niches, ecological niches that aren't being filled. When you have this kind of diversity, you got tall plants, short plants, you got warm season, cool season, you got all these different variety of plants, they fill all the niches. There's no unused space. And because there's no unused space, either above ground or below ground, there's no unused sunlight, no unused water, no unused nutrients. Everything is getting utilized. And, and so you just get, um, you just get this nice blend. Yeah. So, so this was planted the end of May and we're now here in the end of July. So this is only about 60 days worth of growth. Cattle guys watching this are gonna be drooling, wishing they could turn something into this because there's a lot of forage out here, a lot of uh, grazeability. The other thing that I've noticed here, in, in looking at a lot of these same components in their monoculture strips, is that the maturity of some of these things, particularly the brassicas, uh, has been much delayed. So here's, a, here's an African cabbage and when we looked at this down in those strips, these are all in full bloom and starting to set seed pods. This one, however, has not yet bloomed. It's, it's the, 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 the maturity has been delayed, so the grazeability and the forage quality will be extended because it's growing as part of this mix in the same way with some of these mustards that are still blooming versus in the plots, they're completely done. They're seeded out, they're mature. And then the other brassicas, if you can pull out a collard or a rapeseed there, Dale, just yeah, here's, here's show it. that, they look great. And in the monoculture strips, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty well, well burned up. We, it's been well hot. Dead. We've had a lot of 90 and 100 degree heat here. It's pretty well fried them in their strips by themselves. In these mixes, they look fine. Why is that? Is it is it a different little climate down there? What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a different microclimate because um, basically your cool season plants need to have temperatures below, they, they function best when temperatures are below 86 Fahrenheit. And obviously out in the open in the summer we've had, we're over that most of the time. But when you have these, these warm season plants here, getting up above it, shading it, Absorbing and, that and initial transpiring, sunlight they create a cooler microclimate underneath. Mm -hmm. And you know, cool, so these brassicas will grow super fast in October, out in the open, and very slow in July because it's just too hot. But when you create this cooler microclimate, it's like turning a July day into an October day. There's less sun, mm -hmm. but it might be 20 or 30 degrees cooler here than it is up here. And that's why we see them growing a little slower. They're not as far along in the maturity cycle, but looking much, much healthier. So it's like if you're out in the hot sun and you go find a shade tree, it's way more pleasant. Oh, absolutely. These things are under the shade trees here. Now you, have, you do have to be careful that you don't get too many of the warm season things because you can choke them out. You can eliminate all sunlight, which, yeah. which then is not gonna help them. 
But in this, this is our, our, again, our warm season soil builder. So we've got some sunflowers. We do have some sorghum, some dwarf sorghum, so they don't get as tall, but at relatively low rates because we don't want it to take over. We're trying to build the soil with all of this diversity in here.